Hey, hey, what's up, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Greatly appreciate it. It's Vagabond Pat here. I don't want that one. You know, like always, I'm gonna spark it up right now. There's a little bit of a fusion there. Got like six different types of buds because I saved some from every type I get. Then I like to do a little bang pow boom. So that's what this is there. What? Let's get into it. So, today, January 5th, 2023, marks two years since I moved into the van. Been living the van life for two years. Now, have I slept in the van every night for the two years? No. Because issues arise and stuff like that. Especially where I'm at, and especially just, I guess, where I'm at. No, no luck, you know? So, I guess right now, just going to talk about my two-year experience of van life, my thoughts and stuff like that, and then talk about why I am ending van life. So, is your first time tuning in? Thank you very much. Greatly appreciate it. If you viewed before, you know what the deal is, you know? But anyway, yes, it's been two years today. I love the van life. Absolutely love it. Um, I'm changing it now to move in an apartment or anything. I'm still going to be traveling just a different way. Yeah, I built out the van. I bought it almost three years ago. Uh, two and a half years ago, I bought it. Built it out for a little bit. Um, kind of ran out of time. So I had to move into it anyway. But like I said, the ceiling's insulated. I have the vent fan over here, the Max Air vent fan. I have insulated floor and everything. I have a bed and all that. It's a nice lamp. I have solar panels and all that. I run off a Jackery generator. Um, I don't have a toilet. Um, on that note, we uh, we just grab a shopping bag. You know, pop a squat sometimes because some places are closed sometimes. But if I go into a bathroom, I'll go into a restroom. You know, I don't like sh shitting in here, but. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, so there's that. Um, I don't have a shower. So, I was going to truck stops for a little bit. Um, now, where I'm at, it's like 15 bucks at a truck stop for a shower. So, that's a bit expensive. You can get gym memberships and travel around. Um, now, I haven't done too much traveling because I've been working out here also. So, I've kind of been staying, staying put right now, you know? Been out to Joshua Tree, Cathedral City, stuff like that. Here and there, been camping out in the desert, but not too much as of recently, because I've been um, planning on moving out of the van. So I actually haven't been in the van that much right now. I haven't been sleeping in here or anything. Um, I come in and I do film videos and stuff like that. Sometimes I come in here and hang out, smoking here stuff. But I try not to be in here constantly because. I do also have two little dogs and a cat, so they are currently not in the van right now because, like I said, I am trying to sell it. But I love it, the camping and stuff like that. Now, on the camping note, um, you're not always camping in a nice place. Um, sometimes it's parking lots. Right now, I'm in a parking lot. Um, it's actually not that bad here. Knock on wood. Fortunately, it's not that bad. So that's a blessing. Um, I you camp at Walmart's sometimes. Now Walmart's, you do get a lot of traffic through there. So I tend to find that I get bothered a lot at Walmart parking lots. Um, people knock on the van constantly. This and that and that and this. There's a lot of crazy stuff that goes on in the Walmart parking lot. If you if they let trucks stay down in there and stuff like that. So. Um, I mean, it's a safe place. I've never seen any violence or anything like that. Just, you know, typical, like, drug traffic, um, lot lizards, stuff like that. You know, um, some tweakers wandering down there. Thinking the van used to be blue. When it wasn't, it was white. It's originally from Arizona, from an Air Force base. And then a guy in Joshua Tree bought it. That's a Marine. Moved out there, and then I bought it off of him. But yeah, I all types of stuff, you know? Some lady thought her kid was in my car at like 11.30 at night. 
and I, well, in the van, and I was like, oh, you think you're getting some here? Call the damn cops. Bring the cops down here. They're more than welcome to search my van, but you're tweaking right now. You ain't coming in my van, so, you know, all types of crazy stuff. People with guns down there one time, they went on a high-speed chase because guy was going crazy with guns down there. The guy ended up in the wrong lane, ended up crashing and killing into someone and stuff like that. Cra crashing and killing someone, yeah, so it, it was, it was wild down there where I'm at right now where I usually stay it's not all too bad don't really get bothered too much it is quite noisy though um but like I said you can go out into the desert fortunately on the west coast there's a lot of public lands a lot of uh BLM land which is not Black Lives Matters land it is Bureau of Land Management and you could fortunately camp out there now if you ever go ahead and want to take advantage of camping out out there leave no trace behind take all your trash you see some extra stuff throw that in a bag clean it up a little bit make it nice because people do leave trash out there which is sad because it is for our use and it is it is our, for us to keep clean and stuff like that you know and if we keep it clean and stuff we will be able to keep using that land so that is nice um yeah so there's tons of that now you always see like all these influencers with their vans and stuff like that that's nice, but that's expensive, um, super expensive, especially if you have them big old Sprinter vans to build it out, it's expensive. If you buy one built out, the payments on it are expensive. The gas is expensive. I drive an older van, so I know the gas burns differently in my van, but because I had it weighed out and stuff like that, or I weighted it out with um, the wood and stuff like that, like I got hardwood and wooden walls, you know, I got all the stuff fed in here and all that, and I found out I burned more gas, especially when I'm loaded out with everything in the van. Um, also, sometimes in the sprinter vans, it's a little bit more harder to camp places, I've heard. Um, because I've told people, I've been like, hey man, that's a nice, uh, that's a nice van you got there. They're like, oh, well, I like, yeah, I like your van. You know, they're like, believe it or not, sometimes it's a little bit more harder, because people know you're living in the van so you're more likely to get kicked out my van i could throw a ladder on the top because i do have racks on both ends i do have solar panels and stuff but i still can throw a ladder on top and it looks like a construction van it's a white van with black bumpers black wheels and stuff and it almost does look like a construction van or even almost a security van so i have a little bit more luck with stuff like that fortunately so having a big old van sometimes isn't necessarily the best thing Sometimes they're more expensive to also park. Not for nothing. I could get away some places if I want to go to a campsite sometimes. But like, no, nah, it's just a work van. I do have a tent and stuff like that. And I do have a tent. So I could set up a tent in the back of the van and it come in the van and stay in the van. You know what I'm saying? So I could do little things like that. But if you pull into a campsite with a big old Sprinter van, they're going to charge you for an RV site most likely. I don't know if you could get away with the whole tent excuse then for the cheaper sites. And RV sites are expensive. If you want to go to a nice campsite with a nice view, you will be paying money. I've seen campsites anywhere from 50 on up, like over $100 to park a van or an RV. And that is ridiculous right there. So that's things that people don't tell you, especially those places near the ocean. You out that way, it's kind of hard, like all along the crest, the Pacific Crest and stuff, all these nice views, they're all packed right now with van lifers, RVers, and some of the places you have to pay a pretty penny to stay there for that view. And that's not something that they will tell you in their video. Yeah, there's tons of nice views for free. I've been to tons of them. So I'm not saying that's every nice view you have to pay for. Some of them you do though especially a lot of them near the beaches. So I've heard too, cause this is all through hearsay. I haven't gone out that way to try to stay out there because I've met people, especially with like little RVs and stuff, the little Winnebago's and stuff. They're like, man, there ain't no room out there. If you do want to camp, it's over a hundred dollars. The one guy said he paid $150 one time to stay somewhere and it wasn't even that great. Cause I'm right between LA and Vegas. So I'm always talking to people in vans and stuff like that, getting the scoop out that way. You know, so I hear, fortunately, you can't go into the desert. Just sometimes out here, you do get people shooting their guns a lot. I have no problem with guns, but my dogs are scared. So I try not to go out there certain times of the year 
because I know that. And then you do get the people in their uh, quads and stuff like that, partying and stuff. Like I said, my dogs are scared of the gun noises and stuff. So certain times of the years, I do not go out there for that reason. I have had the van break down on me. Now, that's another issue that it, it didn't really even cross my mind. That I live in here and the van had to go in the shop get the transmission rebuilt now I was under warranty I was still having issues the one guy was a bogus shop uh, kept the van for three months voided the warranty never did anything never gave me any money back um, I had to pay almost a thousand dollars to get a tow to him the van and that was a cheap price because as I had Joshua Tree but he said he had to do it out there because of the warranty I couldn't get it rebuilt out in Joshua Tree so unfortunately yada yada um, I'm out like four G's because of that with the tow, the other rebuild, this and that, yada yada. I had to get an extra hotel room for a couple days because I was unfortunately stuck out in Joshua Tree. Actually, I couldn't find any places that wanted to tow the van two hours away, hour and a half away, two hours away. It was whatever it is, and it was ridiculous, man. I was like, this is something else, man. But then any shop out there was also like oh we it's going to be a week and a half before we could even get it in i was like damn so that was a little frustrating that's something people uh you don't really think about you don't really hear about you know um that was a crazy time crazy experience fortunately i was able to find a nice company that was nice enough to bring me back out to barstow for a cheap decent price not fifteen hundred dollars like most companies were even starting to quote me if they were to even but they weren't at the time going out this far and granted this was 2021 so maybe that was still because they were scared because of covid and stuff like that who knows but yeah so i had to get it brought somewhere else the van yada 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 this and that that and this whole big nightmare the guy ended up shutting down the shop and stuff like that so i don't know where he is can't take a quarter or anything now. So this, that, you know, whole big mess there that you don't even think about because people will try to charge you more money also because you live in the van. Um, this guy wasn't charging me any more money. He was just a scam artist to begin with. And that wasn't just with me. That was with multiple people in the town had uh, complaints against him through the DMV board, through this, through that. I think people were suing him. I was planning on suing him to get all my money back because it was a couple thousand dollars but who knows i can't do that now i don't think but anyway fortunately um hotels stopped do well unfortunately hotels stopped doing monthly rentals some hotels don't want to rent to you out here unfortunately i have a id from that's local they didn't want to rent to me out here some of them and the ones that did 60 bucks a night hands down even if you stay a month two months and this that no more monthly deals so it was like 1500 bucks a month to stay at a hotel that's expensive then you have to pay the money to get your van fixed which fortunately i had pretty much saved up i needed like an extra 500 bucks but like i said i just went on vacation i went out i had a good time went to the casino <clears throat> ate good out there and stuff was hanging out having a good time you know i had some money saved up was living it up for a little bit and unfortunately everything went south then so um but fortunately I have an amazing job, was a vet tech at an animal hospital. Fortunately, we closed down now. That's why I say was past tense. But I'll get another job as a vet tech somewhere else eventually when I'm ready. After this trip, hopefully. Um, but yeah, so fortunately, they let me crash in there in the back and on a cop because I did not have the money for a hotel. I would have had to find a whole nother job and stuff to get paid more money and stuff and more hours and work there on my days off from the other job. Because the vet tech industry, unfortunately, you don't get paid that much and that's really no matter where you go as a vet tech i'm hearing so that's a uh, that's not too great i know especially all in california you're not making too much money so yeah i couldn't really afford the 1500 a month so they let me stay there fortunately and fortunately i am able to shower in there and stuff like that so that's a blessing if you guys are watching this really thank you guys for that love you guys for that you don't know you know I ever make it, I ever start making some money, I'm hooking you guys up. Trust me on that, you know? I owe you guys big time.
Let me shower in there so I don't have to get a gym membership or keep paying the truck stops for the showers. So that is also really nice. Now, if you go to some campsites, they have showers and stuff like that. But still through all that, I've been loving it. You know, I love the freedom of it. Um, it's cheap, like I don't have to make payments on my van, so I'm still not paying nowhere near 500 bucks a month for rent, even with what I've put into it mechanical wise, building it out and the purchase of the van, I've still paid less. Uh, I still would have paid more in rent if I rented an apartment the past two years. So that's a big reason of why I did it to do that mainly, but also because I'm a vagabond, you know, I like the uh, travel style, but when I eventually get another setup, um, what I would like to do is get a little camper and a truck. This way, if the truck breaks down, I could find a place to camp the camper, you know, and then stay in the camper there, ride my bike to work because I do own a bike. So, like bicycle, not motorcycle. I'm not that cool, okay? But, um, it's a super cool, I met a lot of cool people have a great time just living this life uh i'm a hoarder at heart but i'm also like less is more so it's been hard to get rid of everything that's another thing i've literally almost gotten rid of everything i've owned especially with this next next trip coming up i've gotten rid of absolutely everything um i have a backpack that i'm gonna fit stuff in and i have a little camper for the dogs and the cats like a little kid trailer and I could keep stuff in there too because I'm going to make storage room in there also. But get to that in a few minutes there. Um, so I've met a lot of cool people. It's good times. I got a little propane stove. I don't have a sink in here or anything. You know, like I said before. Um, but I could wash my stuff at work. Um, I was eventually going to do more work to it because also in the summertime it is hot as balls. Especially out where I'm at in the desert. It gets up to 115, 117 degrees. So this ceiling fan, other fans, they do nothing. You really need an AC unit. Um, I mean, personally, if you're just a person, you could do it. But I worry about my dogs and my cat when it is that hot. Um, they do not like it. So fortunately, I'm able to hang out where I work in there. Mainly, I would just keep the dogs in there in the heat, and I would just walk around after work, go do stuff, because I'm an active person. I like to always be around, try and do something. This is why I started doing YouTube again, you know? But, yeah, I would try to keep them in there. Till it cooled down, turn the fan on, sun went down, cool off the fan, then it was okay. Because it does kind of cool off sometimes during the night, so that's nice. As I said, for the most part, I was in the van. But for some time, I wasn't because, like I said, for three months, I did not have the van because that guy would not even give me the van back. I was about to have to go through the police to get the van back. It was crazy. I could send a tow truck out there, but it's locked on his yard. So it was that was a whole big fiasco with the van. So just be careful about stuff like that. And, um... Like I said, tows, if you have a bigger van, they are going to tow you a, charge you a lot more for a tow. You are going to get charged a lot more through a mechanic if you live in your van. I called one place because I needed the transmission filter done because unfortunately under the rebuilt, they don't do gaskets. Only the mechanicals inside. So, <clears throat> I got the transmission pan filter. I got a price from one guy. One guy said it was 750 bucks just for the labor, not including the gasket. I said, 750 bucks? He said, well, yeah, you live in your van. You're passing through, huh? I said, nah, man, nah. I live in, I work out here, man. It's a work van, dude. And he was like, he was like, oh, oh. He was like, you know what? I'll call you back with a better price in a little bit. So you really have to be careful about that out there. I was like, this guy's crazy. I did not go to him. Even with a cheaper price, I did not respond to his call. I did not answer. I said, this guy's out of his mind, $750. So, 
somewhere else charged me $250, but I'm having issues with the gasket again on and off, so I do need to get it replaced. Um, <coughs> yeah, so I said the heat is bad. I was going to put more work into the fan. I was actually going to cut out for an AC unit on the top and hook it up to the solar panel somehow or yada yada, whatever, you know. I run jack and regenerators and a battery though and it does get so hot out here that they do not want to work or even charge so that is also an issue when it gets that hot because then you cannot run your fans or anything so and then you open a door and it's super windy out here and we are in the desert and then all the sand blows in and stuff like that and garbage blows in oh it's just you know so sometimes it's not the best, but I've been in beautiful areas, beautiful places. Wouldn't trade it for the world still. But just like normal life, it has its ups and downs. It is your house. It is your vehicle. Um, it's going to break down. Just like in a normal house, your pipes are going to break. You're going to have to fix things. And when this house breaks, fortunately, you can't stay in there. A pipe breaks in your regular house, most times you can stay in there. You have the right insurance. I don't know if the right insurance will cover it. If you have the right, like, RV or camper insurance, whatever. I don't know if they would cover, like, a hotel stay or anything like that. So, just think about all that. I said, I love it. My dogs love it. I said, I go to work. After work, come out. Walk the dogs. The dogs get so excited to start pulling towards the van. They're like excited to come in here. The cat is perfect. I pulled the cat out of my engine at 5 a.m. in the morning one morning at the Walmart parking lot. I heard her meowing, the van, meowing around the van for a while, actually. And then it sounded like she was in the van. Walk around, don't see nothing. Go underneath it. She's hanging out. Pull her out. I've had her over a year now. Hard to believe, you know. I was just going to keep her for two weeks and get rid of her. But she does have neurological issues, this and that. So I am going to try to bring her on my next trip. So I said, um, if you want to do it, go ahead and do it. Just expect there will be problems, but you won't regret doing it though. And it does get hot in the van. It does get cold in here. Um, I was going to get like this diesel heater set up, but now I'm not going to do that because I am moving out of the van. And um, I do have a Mr. Heater Buddy, and that actually does really nice. You turn that on for a few minutes and it does warm it up nice in here. And like I said, the van is insulated, so that's good. But the insulation still doesn't do all that much because it's not like, uh, I don't know how to explain. It's not like a house insulation, you know? You still see metal parts and stuff like that. Even though I do got spray foam fill, filled up in there, but this still gets really cold and everything. So yeah, so there is all that. But, um, so, yeah, some, sometimes you'll get kicked out of a place where you're sleeping and stuff like that. You're like, what in the world? You know, but, eh. So sometimes some people just want to talk to you about the van life, which is pretty cool. I said, I love it. I will definitely, um, maybe I'll get another van, but maybe I'll get the camper or a truck. Who knows what's next? Um, well, after my next trip, who knows what's after that? I don't even know how long my next trip is going to be. Um, I know I'm going to New York, but anyway, we'll get onto that real quick. But anyway, van life, highly recommend it. Um, won't regret it. Try it out. It's fun. If you do regret it, you could always sell the van and just start another chapter of life. It's that easy. I think it's harder move. It'll be harder moving into the van than it will be moving out. My only issue is that it's actually hard to sell a van right now believe it or not especially everyone thinks it's so i got I'm like I told people oh it's gonna be five thousand they're like five thousand dollars boy it's got 135,000 miles on it it's got brand new tires I got almost twenty thousand into it you know what i'm saying and i know i'm not gonna get out of it what i put into it that's why i'm not asking twenty thousand dollars you know i put a lot of mechanical work into it this and now i've done a list of stuff you know If I, I'm like, yeah, it's a house. It's got insulated walls, floor, a bed. You could, it's meant to live in. And they're like, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. But this is a, a 
cheap area where I'm at. No offense to anyone that's out here that's watching this. It's kind of like a cheap. I tried giving stuff out for free before I moved into the van. And people were complaining that I wouldn't bring them something free. Come and pick it up. It is free. I'm not bringing it to you. Wild. Wild times we're living in. Wild times. Especially not for nothing. There's an entitlement out here in California. Sorry to anyone in California that's watching it. That is not everyone that's out here. But I find there is a high level of entitlement. That's just my opinion. I'm not originally from out here. Sorry. But anyway. On to the next trip. Which will be a bike ride cross country. That is right. I'm gonna ride a bicycle cross country. Me, and my dogs, and my cat. It's gonna be fun. I've been doing some riding already. Um, just little practice rides at 19 mile spurts, 19, 20 ish mile spurts, you know. <coughs> Building up some stamina, getting the legs built back up. Right now, I only got about 200 miles in. But that's still pretty good. So yeah, so um, no, I'm gonna stop a couple places, see a couple people, hang out with a couple people for a little bit, for a few days and stuff, and then eventually get back to New York. In New York, I will probably work and make some money because I do need to make some money. Um, so I'll do that for a little bit. But while I am in New York, I will still ride around. I will still go camping and show you guys around there. Because I am from a beautiful area in the mountains out there. Tons of camping and stuff like that. So, there we go. But, um, it's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. I'm going to try to stream every day parts of the ride. I'm looking into getting a camera and everything like that. So, um, you guys recommend any good cameras? Let me know any good, cheap, affordable cameras. I'm not trying to spend five or six hundred dollars on a camera that isn't that <clears throat> that isn't that great. You know, if it's really good, let me know. Other than GoPro and stuff, because I've been hearing bad stuff about GoPro lately. But I don't know because I've never owned one. So let me know about that if you guys have any recommendations on that. But that will be the next trip. So I'm going to go down south and then head up north. I will probably hit like Route 11 and stuff like that because I did backpack six years ago cross country for 11 and a half months, stopped, hung out and stuff like that um, in places. I never hitchhiked, but I did accept rides. If some cool people tried to offer me rides, my dog wanted to get in the car. I had a black lab at the time. May you rest easy, Cyrus. But anyway, that was the time of my life. So that is why I'm not taking the van cross country and I'm selling the van because I am going to ride a bicycle cross country, which has been a dream of mine since I backpacked cross country. I said, oh, it'd be fun to ride a bike cross country because I met a couple people riding the bike cross country. I actually met a dude that's been doing it for 30 years, Badger. He's the man, he's been doing it 30 years, he said. I said, damn, it's crazy, dude. You've been doing it 30 years. He was an older guy, so yeah. He said he did it one day, never stopped. Now, I've kind of been like, since I backpacked cross country, I stayed with my parents for a bit, got a job, booked a little camper, kind of stayed in a camper, then stayed with my homie back out of New York for a little bit on and off, stayed in the camper here and there, doing my thing, New York, making some good money out there, being a waiter, bartender, doing some bunch of side work and stuff, and then COVID hit, so I came back to California. Um, I sold my little camper that I had. My camper was tiny, smaller, way smaller than the inside of the van. Um, and yeah, I sold that, drove back out, sold my Explorer because I bought the van and was working on the van. And January 5th, because at that time I was staying with my parents while I was working on the van. And um, they ended up moving back to New York so I ended up just moving into the van and been in here for two years, but it is coming to an end, the van life, but I will, uh, you know, continue traveling in other ways, other forms, who knows, I'll probably get another van, I'm not ending it because I dislike it, I do love it, but just because I want to travel another way right now. The last two times I've been cross country, I have driven, and in all honesty, I really don't care for driving. Um, I still like walking, I still like 
riding my bike and fortunately I have a place to park the van and keep the dogs if I want to go out and do that so fortunately I do a lot of walking I could park down at Walmart and do shopping but sometimes I'll come up here put the dogs in the clinic walk down there because it is good for you to get that exercise the vitamin D like I said now I have a bike I've been doing the bike riding getting ready for the trip hopefully February I will be starting the trip probably the end of this month or sometime in February I will be starting the trip um, I might not be going cross country right away I will probably ride around California for a little bit see some cool places around here camp out near them and show you guys some of those places that are out near here to explore so that'll be fun <coughs> so stay tuned for some excitement on the channel time to spice it up a little bit get out of the van I still will be smoking weed, still be doing strain reviews, but I will be also going on a journey. You know, and I do have some strain reviews banked that are in the van that I will be uploading periodically also throughout time. So there's also that. So I still will be doing this. I still have ones where I have long hair and a long beard, but I cut the hair and I cut the beard because... I have to wear a helmet all the time. You know, the beard's going back in, the hair's going back out though. But I'll trim it up again, you know, in a little bit. But I have to wear a helmet all the time, so. Now, that's a whole nother journey, a whole nother trip in itself, doing something like that. Because, so I'm really not staying in hotels. I'm just going to travel around, have some fun, do my thing, you know. And, um, live the life there, live the life, you know, um, but sometimes it's nerve wracking because you really don't know where you're going to sleep, what you're going to do, but I have been in a situation like that before, tons of times, I've slept on the streets at gas stations and stuff like that, just doing my thing, you know, and I kind of really enjoy that life more than being in a vehicle and stuff like that, in all honesty, that's the way to see the country backpack or I haven't ridden a bicycle yet, so I can't really get my experience on that, but I will definitely backpack again. If I had a big dog, I might be walking again. I might not be uh, riding a bike, but I do have two little dogs and a cat. So therefore, it makes it a little bit more difficult to really walk. Hence, I've got a bike, a little kid trailer, everything, yada, 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 and we'll be going on the trip. I'll be doing a review on the bike soon because I do have about 200 miles on it. So I'll be doing a review on that, updating, how that's going um it's gonna be sad to get rid of the van you know so but i'm excited for what's to come also nervous also scared i said even the van life um sometimes it's the unknown sometimes it's the known so that's it's kind of what i like about it sometimes you drive around you don't know where you're going to end up what you're going to do yada yada you know but I said right now, I haven't really been in the van all too much because I've been trying to sell it. So I've been staying put, you know. But anyway, I said, Vagabond Pat, I'm out. You're watching the video still. Thanks for, thanks for tuning in still, you know. It's 30 minutes in, but I'm out of here because I'm going to go eat some dinner. Cook some soup or something like that, you know. I'll have some chili mac. So I might make that. But anyway, thanks for watching. As always, much love, stay positive, spread the good vibes, give people a chance. Sometimes you give someone a chance, they're an asshole, they're an asshole. Oh, well, at least you give them a chance. Who knows? That asshole could change your life for the better. But anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to my thoughts and opinions on my two years of van life and yada, yada. Um, I actually filmed one of these before, but I was like, uh, you know, I'll wait. I'll wait till the actual two-year mark to film one on the day of. And I wasn't too happy with that one. Because I feel like I missed some points. But I feel like this one I missed some points. Because I hit on the points I thought I missed in the other one. But yeah. I love it. I'm not ending it because I hate it. If you want to do it. Try it out. You could always change your life again. You know. You will regret. You, you'll you probably regret not trying it out more. Than you will regret trying it out. So there's that. You don't want to be 50 and ever be like. Man I should have done that. You know. That's why like sometimes I'm like. Am I, am I doing the right thing? Um kind of just leaving and riding a bike cross country getting rid of everything um it's really hard at times in all honesty 
hard to be like, am I making the right decision doing this? Um, but long run, yeah, because I want to do it. And if I'm 50 years old, I know I will regret never riding my bike. At that time, I can't do it, but who knows? I might not be in the position to. You never know what life brings to you. So right now, I'm physically able to, um, I'm not really worried about the financial ability, even though I'm broke, but that's not really uh, what it is. The road will provide for you, you know? Like I said, I went backpacking. I never panhandled or anything like that. And I made my way just fine because people will bless you. Thank the Lord or thank someone. You know, thank some higher power out there because that was amazing. The one guy told me that. He says, never panhandle or anything. I got work along the way. Sometimes people will just pull up ways ahead of me, drop groceries off on the side of the road because I never hitchhiked or anything. You know, I never panhandled. So he's like, oh, the road will provide. There's nice people out there, man. He stayed with strangers and stuff like that. It was fun. It was a blast. So I'm looking forward to uh, riding a bike cross country, having a good time, meeting some good people and stuff like that. I do have some money to my name when I go, especially if I could sell the van. That would be great, but I'm not going to be able to sell it for that much. So who knows? But anyway, um, yeah, thanks for watching. As always, much love. Vagabond Pat, I'm out. Peace.